What do you do when the fair lands of Bretonia are at risk? Naturally, you ally the closest green skin horde and you bring the fight to the enemy. Today we're going to show you a fun 2v2 matchup between the Vampire Counts and Skaven versus Bretonia and the Greenskins. From my army, I have a very uh, balanced deployment. I've got a hammer of Gork uh, to bait the units, I was hoping, or at least take out some high value units. Uh, I realized as Greenskins, I probably wasn't going to win an artillery fight versus Skaven, but you know, it, it's a good unit, so why not bring it? Uh, and in case anything took the bait, I had one, two, three units of archers curled around the outside with a little bit of support, some s snares on both sides, and the goblin, uh, and the arachnarch spider to summon some spiders, and just pin stuff in place if anything came this way. Uh, unfortunately, nothing took the bait, so that was a bit of a wasted deployment, but eh, it was... It was fun thinking about it during the <laughs> deployment phase. Bretonians, nothing crazy. Line of spearmen with some archers. And then, uh, you know, what fun is it playing Bretonian if you don't bring some cavs? So he did have some cav in the back here. Um, Skaven, anticipating a lot of cav. They brought four units. You can count them. One, two, three, four of warp lightning cannons. And the vampire counts... Uh, Kind of an elite build here. There is some chaff infantry on the ground here, but it, I mean, you're looking at skellies and uh, zombies, so nothing too um, vicious over here. And he was hoping to get his killing power from the Terror Geist, the Blood Dragon Vamp Lord, and then in the woods it had some Blood Knights and some sneaky um, Black Knights, uh, Varix Reavers, and the Hex Race. So uh, with that said and done, I'm gonna press play and talk you through like the whole reason I'm showing you this replay. There is one thing and one thing only I wanted to do in this game, and I was gonna judge the entire success on the game by whether or not I was able to achieve this, and it was to bait um, a high value unit into attacking a goblin big boss, and then stomp a foot of Gork on top of it. So let's see if I'm able to do that. Uh, and if so, how much damage is it going to do? I know, uh, you know, other people have posted some replays. You can combo it really well with, like, say, uh, Effigy of the Git. Or, uh, so, you, like, basically that's a snare that's on Wurzeg. And then you hold the unit in place and then you stomp a big, uh, big foot on top of them. But there is another method of doing that. And uh, I just want to hopefully highlight that in this battle. And that is with these, uh, these Goblin Big Bosses. And the reason why this method can work is because they're very small targets and if... They engage with a cav unit. The cav unit will cluster around them. Like, they'll try and surround the hero. That's the way the AI works. And because of that, it's going to be very densely packed. And you can absolutely crush them with the foot of, foot of Gork. So I wanted to scout with these um, goblin big bosses. And I figured something was going to try and ambush me. And, but So I brought, I brought the Orc Shaman over here too. So that he'd be ready to drop the foot of Gork. But... I made a big mistake and I overcommit the Orc Shaman and the Blood Knights got onto him and I was like, oh no, this is really, really not how I wanted to see this go, right? Uh, I'm going to lose my Shaman right off the bat, so I dive Azheg in here uh, and just try and scare off these Blood Knights. I, I mean, maybe the Blood Knights, that could have been a good engagement for them, but there was no elite infantry to kind of come over and support. There were a couple, you know, spearmen, but nothing to, to write home about. And I guess he wanted to get in another charge, but I was like, okay, because he pulled back for that second charge, that gave me a chance to pull my Orc Shaman out, and then I'm just going to slow down here. Look, I finally got what I wanted. Actually, I didn't have to wait that long. Goblin Big Boss. Uh, the player... Oh, these are Varric Reavers, Black Knights. but So not Blood Knights, but still a pretty good uh, target, right? At least for demonstration purposes. So this unit has 110... Um, armor it's worth about 1100 gold it's a regiment regiment of renown it's got about 6k of health and one foot of gork goes down let's look at this thing it's all this great oh oh that is one angry gork oh and look at the health bar go down look at the they're down to nine they're oh they're all exploding and oh 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 oh, oh. kablooey that unit is just like incinerated demolished off the off the field good night it was nice knowing you watch this what watch this like they're just done done none left zero they completely erased it off of one cast 
Over here in the middle, like the Hammer Gork, I, I, this was pretty much the only thing I had a clear line of sight on. And I, have, I pulled it up to take some pot shots, but the Warp Lightning Cannons are no joke. They were within range and they started firing back. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to win that engagement. Eventually, I do pull off the crew from there. Uh, Vampire Counts is having a really hard time. And I know I mentioned this before, but like if you're playing a a game with your player make sure with another player make sure you play with the other player like right now the skaven yes he has some warp light warp lightning cannons but like they're not doing a whole lot right now just playing with this hammer of gork and all of these resources are just sitting here idle they're not being used so like the vampire counts player here is like completely over his head like he's fighting two armies right now and he's not getting any support so um you know if you're the skaven player you know, recognize this and help out uh, the Vampire Counts player. Alternatively, if you're the Vampire Counts player and you're not getting the support from your ally, go back and sit behind your ally and make your ally start taking some damage and doing some work. And trust me, they'll get engaged soon enough. And then when they do, you can, you know, come out and help uh, use your mobility, use your elite troops uh, to sort of pin the knights in place and other things. Well, so the Warp Lightning Cannon has time to do work. Uh, the Terror Geist goes after Azhag and some of these other uh, units here. The Blood Knight, he gets pulled down uh, into the middle here. But the Terror Geist is now getting shot up pretty badly by the Archers. I do have a unit of Nasty Skulkers in reserve here to snare anything that sort of sneaks through. Actually, two units. And, you know, these, these Goblins, they don't do a lot of damage. But if you have the Rusty Errors, um, they're going to crack the armor. And with the armor cracked, like, that's going to give an opportunity for these little, you know, cheap goblin archers and only about 300 gold to start doing some major work in here. And, and, and you can see the terror guys is starting to have some leadership problems. The Bretonian player very smartly has brought over the two paladins and Fae Enchantress. That is an absolutely monstrous uh, combination for elite units like the... Um, the Blood Dragon Lord and the Terror Geist to deal with. Azhag is starting to take a little bit of fire from these Warp Lightning Cannons, so I do have to be careful with him. I will pull him down uh, shortly. But the Nasty Skulkers interrupting some charges from these uh, these uh, cavalry units. They do have the Snare, they do have the Armor Pen, so I'm more than happy to take on the Black Knights. Bretonian player reacts quickly and adds the mass of the Knights of the Realm to pin them in place so that the Skulkers have a chance to do work. Terror Geist tries to come over here and help out. He's kind of low. Azhag is here. He realizes that he can help out. Ragnarok Spiders pushed up, so there's a lot of options. And that Terror Geist is not long for this world. Meanwhile, the Paladins have finished off the Blood Dragon Lord, so the Vampire Army with only the Chaff Infantry, now the leadership gone, and like their elite units basically erased, uh, they're in deep trouble. X-Ray has put in a rear charge, um, but I, I just want to show you this. Like, I dropped one Spirit Leech on them, and suddenly they've like their leadership just tanks. They were at like... Like, Spirit Leech is supposed to be good at individual models, but you can use it on Cav, too, and, like, high-value targets like this. And because their Lord died, because they have damage sustained, they're, like, basically instantly crumbling. And, you know, it's saying that they're attacked in the flank. I, I don't see it. They just rear charge some units, and there's, like, one Black Orc here on the side. But it was enough to trigger it. And because of that, like, this is, like, a, I don't know, $1,600 dollar unit more or less that's just going to be erased and what value did it get out of it like it just rear charged black orcs and these uh, spearmen and what damage did it do like literally nothing so i don't know why you would ever take that unit and i feel like i think they look so cool i would love to take them more often but they just they can't i don't see what role they fill on they serve on the battlefield there goes azhag a little love tap to the uh, zombie uh, Terror Geist, Dragon, uh, um, you know, I was probably a little late on, on giving him the love tap, but, you know, things were going well, and I was still having fun over here. Skaven player recognizes that things are getting kind of sketchy, moves up. Uh, since the Terror Geist is gone, uh, I don't really have any other good large targets to be using my arrows at, so I might as well shoot at these Rat Ogres. There is a little bit of clumping here. This is not ideal, but... I was pretty confident the Warp Lightning Cannons weren't going to be, you know, targeting these uh, archers. And 
Uh, is there any magic on the field for the for Skaven? No, I don't see it. Just Lord Skrulk. I guess Lord Skrulk has some magic, but I didn't see. You know, he's not going to waste it on these goblin archers. Bretonian uh, peasant bowmen. They're starting to shoot at some Skaven slaves. I mean. Bretonia, the Bretonian archers are not super um, expensive, and if they use some ammo on Skaven slaves, it's not the end of the world. Generally, I'd say, you know, don't waste your ammo on Skaven slaves, but in this case, the balance bar is, like, heavily in our favor, and uh, there was not really too much other elite troops that we needed to worry about. So, um, what's this? We've got a rod of corruption going down from Lord Skrull. That's degening. Uh, this front line like if Lord Skulk was here a long time ago probably Britannia's front line would have collapsed like that rod of corruption it does so much damage look at this and you have the plague monks and that would have completely chopped up the Britannia front line um, but it was it was uh, sometimes hindsight's 2020 and uh, I think that's what happened here the knights are the knights of the realm are trying to flank around the the size of these uh, remaining units and get into the warp lightning cannons. Skaven player, good job recognizing that. He keeps a couple units in reserve just in case. Storm vermin with halberds. Uh, maybe a little overcommitting here. Three units of storm vermin with halberds. That's almost like 3k. And um, like I think he could have used those in this main fight, right? Uh, but the... Again, I th at this point, the battle's pretty much over, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much. I'm going to hit the, the fast-forward button and, and just kind of uh, wrap things up here. Azhag, he's dodging the warp lightning cannons, no problem. He's super fast, so Skaven are wasting a lot of energy here. Look at him, he's like Neo from the Matrix. Azhag, the, the one. Good job, Azhag. The Black Orcs have been going absolutely bananas on all the Chaff infantry. Let's just see really quick here. Yeah, these ones are up to 265. These ones are at 124 kills. And they're not even close to done. It's good that I had the benefit of the forest there. Um, so I could fight undercover. I tried to get another foot of Gork here. Let's let's see how it does. Oh, bam. Storm Vermin with Halberds. That's another, another like $1,100 unit. Goblin Big Boss and Halberds. And it's down to like less than half health and skaven are not known for leadership you see the leadership has gone down to minus 38 so there's a good chance that they're just going to break off and flee right away from that um yeah they are wavering they're wavering they do i think pull it together at the last second if i had anything else to follow up on that foot of gork this unit would have fled and i would have been able to like eliminate it an $1,100 unit, but as it is, because of the damage sustained, it's less than, oh, Warp Landing Cannon just torched his own rats, these poor guys. Uh, but because of the damage sustained, like, it's not going to take much to just uh, erase them from the field. I'm not sure if Lord Skrulk has died at this point. He was pretty solo running out of entry. Oh, there he is. But he's he's in tough here. He's got the Fey Enchantress and two Paladins who are about to clean up his filth. Uh, the Black Orcs, they're not even going to bother with Skrulk. They're just going to move up here, push towards this artillery, and try and get this uh, off the field. Because once the artillery is gone, uh, like the balance bar is just going to shift, and it's going to be GG. Azhag, he's just looking for an opening here. He's not really afraid of anything. The knights cycling around. They got into the Poison Wing Club of Deals because there's nothing to screen them. Archers are pouring in the fire. And I'm going to just basically end it here. There's not much time left um so fun match i think there were a couple a couple things here i was really pleased that i got to do my my foot of gork there that was the uh oh look at this dwellers below you don't see that very often but that is a nice spell you can do a ton of damage and that seals the deal so fun game okay uh so i think i mean couple chevrons here on uh, the skulkers and the black orcs they were basically fighting what they were supposed to do uh, i was pleased with the archers they were able to take out the terrorgeist and the goblin big boss and the orc shaman worked uh, fantastically well for me 
I did bring Azhag with just one spell, uh, the um, Purple Son of Xeris, because I thought, you know, in case the Orc Shaman dies, then I still have one other AoE spell that I can use to, to basically try that same tactic, put the Goblin in, and then I could do Purple Son of Xeris instead of the uh, Foot of Gork. But uh, fortunately, I got off the T-Cast, so actually I didn't even need the Purple Son of Xeris, and I didn't have the Winds of Magic to use it at all in the fight. Um, Foot of Gork is super powerful, but it's also very thirsty on magic. So if you're bringing Foot of Gork, uh, you're not going to get more than maybe one or two casts of it if you're overcasting. And um, like if you bring Wurzag, for example, he's got like a Bonewood Staff, right? And uh, it triggers every time you cast a spell. So if you're only getting two casts per game, then you might want to think about bringing that Bonewood Staff because you're not going to get a lot of proxa on it. The Bonewood Staff, by the way, gives you uh, your whole army, like a melee attack buff every time you cast a spell. Um, this was this kind of made me laugh. The unconventional general with his Bretonian army brought probably the most conventional Bretonian army imaginable uh, with the Fey Enchantress, two paladins, and uh, Knights of the Realm. Uh, these Grail Guardians performed extraordinarily well. I think they were sort of in their element with the, the magic uh, damage. Um, against Vampire Counts and the Skaven, so um, good spot for them. I think the Knights of the Realm are the best Bretonian Cav because they, they're the right price point, they win against large, they have a high charge bonus, um, and if they get shot, it's not like you lose the game, so you don't have to be so dainty with them that you can't just charge them in and be aggressive. Uh, the Spearman, they held out against the, the Zombie Chaff. Uh, if Scroll came over there, summoned a few plague monks. They would have cut up the spearmen, and that would have opened a, a line into the archers. Uh, so that would have been my recommendation. Um, decent man, you know the hexerace, poor guy. No, uh, no real value out of them, but it's not his fault. It's just a terrible unit. The blood knights, uh, they did what they could, but fortunately, I was able to escape with my goblin shaman. And the Varix Reavers, those, those poor suckers, they got stomped on and were eliminated immediately from the fight. Um, and then Skaven, you know, Warp Blending Cannons do what Warp Blending Cannons do. But outside of that, there was not very much killing power. The Rat Ogres, when they were fighting, they were not fighting, you know, in conjunction with their infantry. So it made it very easy for them to get isolated and sniped down and they don't you know they can do a lot of damage but they don't have a lot of staying power so once they take that damage you're gonna start having leadership problems you're gonna um, lose your mass to sort of pin things in place and with them gone the knights are, are free to do whatever they want to do so fun game and uh, catch around